We're continuing to follow major developments out of the Middle East. U.S. officials confirmed to CBS News that an Israeli missile hit Iran in a retaliatory strike overnight. Iran state media is reporting that three drones were shot down over the central city of Isfahan, which houses sites associated with the country's nuclear program. Israel's allies, including the U.S., have warned against any action that could further raise tensions in the region. More on this, let's bring in Dan Raviv. He's a former CBS News correspondent and a co-author of Spies Against Armageddon, Inside Israel's Secret Wars. He's also a contributor for Airmail and Time.com. Uh, Dan, great to have you to talk about this. Uh, so Iran is downplaying the incident. We've seen images from state media showing a much ado about nothing. Uh, why are they doing that? Uh, it seems that Iran doesn't want to retaliate, at least not in a big, obvious way. Like this past Saturday night, when Iran launched more than 300 missiles and drones at Israel. And as you know, about 99 percent were shot down. Israel had help in that on Saturday night. Uh, from the United States and Britain and even some Arab countries, including Jordan. And so right now, Iran wants to say this wasn't anything. And the Israeli government is saying absolutely nothing, telling even the cabinet ministers to, to write nothing about it, confirm nothing. But one minister, the extreme right-winger Itamar Ben-Gvir, he tweeted one word. It's a Yiddish word, dardala. It basically means, eh, nothing. And the rest of the Israeli government uh, is saying nothing. And so it, it seems this is not an escalation. It's just a bit of a response by Israel to what Iran tried to do this past weekend. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, Secretary Blinken spoke earlier today at the G7 meeting about the situation. He was asked over and over again about uh, Iran's uh, retaliation, if you will, and he declined to comment. He chose instead to focus on uh, Iran instead of Israel. Um, what do you well, make of yeah. his statement? Well, here in Washington, it seems that, uh, well, officials are confirming that Israel told the U.S. during the day yesterday that it was going to retaliate against Iran, but it would be limited. Uh, apparently, the U.S. did not veto that, to, to use that word. It gave kind of a yellow light. You know, there could be a red light or a green light. So the U.S. understood that Israel wanted to respond, felt it had to respond inside Iran to show that Israel is able to do that. And if Blinken had been annoyed at that, he would have said so at that meeting in Italy, but he wasn't annoyed. Mm. Mm. Uh, world leaders had urged, as you know, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu to show some restraint following Iran's attack last weekend. Can this be interpreted as restraint or not? Yeah, I think it is restraint, Vlad, uh, because the, the usual defense strategy by Israel is to hit back against any attack. It is rare for Israel to do nothing. So they did a little something. It doesn't seem too dangerous right now. You're noting the stock market's not falling. The oil prices are not going crazy. I think it's a small incident. But, you know, the shadow war, the secret war between Iran and Israel, I'd say, is still continuing. So we know that, yes, this is about sending a message from Israel to Iran and Iran to Israel. But it's also about sending a message to their domestic audiences. Um, what is Benjamin Netanyahu's motivation now? What is the message he's trying to, to send to the Israeli people? Yeah, when we, have, when we combine everything going on with Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu, uh, he, he wants to be a wartime leader. He wants to stay in office. Last October 7th, when Hamas attacked from Gaza and killed about 1,200 people, uh, Netanyahu wanted to hit Gaza very hard. And so, of course, Israel has done so with reports from Hamas, at least, of 34,000 people killed and a real tragedy, a disaster in Gaza. And Israel wants to keep going there. So for Netanyahu, it's about his image, staying in power. Uh, Israel looked kind of weak last October. So now, of course, in every way, he wants to look strong. Politically within Israel, it may be helping a little, but the polls indicate he's very unpopular. But he doesn't have to call an election for another two years. Mm. So as we know, things can change right. quite rapidly in politics. Dan Ravid, thank you very much.